Hi, this is Crash Me Twice, and I hope you are having a great day and doing well. Today, I would like to share with you this multi-part project, which details the conversion of the Verpa Warbird rudder pedals from the floor to a T-slot profile mount. I made this in preparation for the next part, which is a damper system inspired by the Mill Mi-24 helicopter. As you can see here, I have used until now a bunch of 2x4 wood scraps to prevent the rudder pedals to move away from me when pushed. This is a temporary solution at best, and I decided to make something more permanent as you will see in this video. Here you can see that there is more than ample room between the pedals to clear the vertical profile. I can mount the rudder assembly on top of a horizontal T-slot profile at the rear of my cyclic base, and this will bring the rudder pedals closer towards me and my legs don't need to stretch so far to reach full left or right rudder. This project starts with removing the floor stand from the assembly. Only four knots are required to be taken off and I'm left with the base and pedals. I will not be needing the floor stand for this project, so I set it aside for some future use. By removing the floor stand, I gained access to the internal electronics. Now with the USB jack out of the way, I take out the electronics board and set it aside. Next, I'm taking off the mechanics to get to the bare box. Four bolts and nuts is all that holds it together. Ball X drivers are a lifesaver for this kind of job. The last bolt did not comply. Anyway, there is a heavy duty spacer plate between the rudder mechanics and the case. I assume that Verpal put that in place to add some strength to the mounting area, but other than that, I don't know. Now that logo plate looks cool, and I already can think of a bunch of ideas for it. I'll take it off and set it aside as well. Ain't she pretty? We're at the point where the fun part starts. It's always a great feeling cutting things up, especially new and expensive stuff. Jokes aside, the box needs trimming on all corners. I'm using the spacer plate as a template to make sure there's still room for the electronics when I'm done. Scrap the mark, off to the garage we go. Using my trusty angle grinder with a cutoff wheel makes quick business removing both flares from either side. A bit of grinding will clean things up. Mm -hmm. 
After mounting a new wheel on the grinder, things can continue. And yes, in case you wonder, I wear ski gloves that is a chilly minus 20 in there. Celsius that is. Then, I cut the box where it was marked, shorten it to the desired length. And yes again, that's a space heater right in front of my more delicate parts. And there's the sad one, all alone. Here we go, all looks good so far. You can see here that I have taped it with a magnet. Experience told me to do that. Okay, here are the cut parts, left and right flange and the shortened box. Now I make a new flange on the front of the box from a scrap piece of thick angle iron. First I take some measurements and then I cut it into the needed width. Perfect. Mounting holes to fit onto the 4080 profile needs to be drilled before proceeding to the next step. Champert and Ray Duraki. A quick test just to make sure it fits, and it does. And I'm back in the garage to weld this puppy onto the box. A little of spot welding makes it easier before MIG welding it in the vise permanently. All good. A bit of grinding to remove any unsightly protrusions. And here's Shorty, ready to go. The leftover angle iron will make a nice bracket for the rear of the box. No welding required, as this can be bolted on. This time we need four holes. Two for the aluminum profile and two to mount it to the box. The box gets marked where I need to drill holes for the angle bracket and then I need to thread the hole on the box for M8 bolts. A punch and a drill will finish this job. After tapping it gets test bolted and I check it one more time.
looking good. Okay, let's keep going. A quick paint job with truck back coating and reassembly can begin. The truck back coating I'm using looks great, very similar to powder coating. It is durable and blends in with the purple color perfectly. The reassembly starts with the spacer plate. The rudder mechanics will be attached to the box and everything else bolted back on in the reverse order. Careful with the PCB, it will break if over tightened. It is all back together and it's time to mount it to the 4080 profile. A scrap piece of marine board will serve for side supports, closing the gap and assure that there's no infiltration of spiders. Marine board cuts really nice on my chop saw, and a bit of machining will make this look top notch. Then I am adding holes with the pockets for the mounting bolts to fit flush to the surface. It worked out nicely. To create the rear profile section, I need to know the depth. I then measure and mark the profile and cut it to size. Holes for the banjo or anchor fasteners are then milled into the profile. I also squared up the other side before milling the holes at that end.
Time to get the USB jack out of the case. I disconnect a small white connector from the board and thread it through a rubber grommet. The grommet will find its place where the USB jack was installed previously. The original USB jack cover gets now reinstalled at the opposite side. And for the mounting holes next to the grommet, I am using two hex bolts to cover the original mounting holes, which now only have a visual purpose. I am replacing the original Phillips bolts with stainless hex cap bolts. It is just a cleaner and more cohesive look. In a matter of fact, the entire project consists of the use of stainless steel bolts and nuts. The only exceptions are the t slots nuts, I couldn't find any in stainless steel. I already have mounted the right side cover, which I made from marine board to the profile. Here you see the anchor bolts, which will fasten the profile to the vertical one behind my cyclic. The box is fastened to the top of the profile via T-slot nuts. I'm now mounting the box to the profile. The left side marine board cover needs a bracket to accept the new location of the USB jack. I have done this as my cable will run vertically upwards the vertical profile. I don't want it to stick sideways out of the box. Back in the shop, I cut a piece of scrap aluminum to size. This will fit vertical into a 40mm slot the width of the marine board profile. I measure and mark the placement for the USB jack and millet. I then drill the holes for the USB jack to be mounted. I mill into the marine board the slot and test fit the bracket into it. Perfect snug fit. I tap the marine board for the new bracket to be bolted on. The final step on the bracket is to countersink the holes. I start by using cap screws to hold it in place for chamfering, and then replace them afterwards with countersunk bolts.
To the left side, I mount the marine board cover and the USB jack is bolted to the USB bracket. We all done. Okay, so that is where I am with the project right now. I'm quite happy how it turned out though. I'm still waiting on parts, but once they get here, this entire assembly is ready to receive the damper mod and final mounting to my sim pit. And this I will show in the next video. I can't wait though until I actually can use it again, as this pilot is grounded for now. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the first part of this build and hope I earned a like from you. Crash me twice, out. <laughs>